I am very interested in the fact that he does podcasts. I am very interested in the fact that so many athletes now are doing podcasts. I know Iman Shumpert was here doing one earlier. I also feel like, given the type of event that is, and ostensibly there's people who make decisions in this and we should be thinking about our industry, we kind of got to talk about what's going on, right? I did a TV show for HBO called Game Theory. And we had our last show, our last guest was Cameron. And this is his Cam had just started doing the, um, doing the YouTube show, which I thought was really good and interesting. And so I wanted to have him on the show. And I looked at him and I said, you know, when I was in college, you know, a lot of them cats wanted to get like you, right? You know, they were wearing the paint because they was trying to get like you. And I just want to know when it is that you decided you was trying to get like me. All these cats are trying to get like us. And it's, it's almost like, like you remember when the Apple products really got to moving, right? Like when people really started getting the Macs and people like, and it was an interesting shift because you probably noticed it when like the cool people and the people who made beats started using Apple products and started telling everybody that they were using Apple products. But part of why I've always felt like Apple caught on the way it did as a brand is because it was the rare thing that the dorks were on first and the dorks held it down and the cool kids were all then trying to be like the dorks. And so the dorks all stuck around because now they get an extra level of credibility and value for what they're doing because the cool kids are now coming on and now Apple got trillions of dollars in cash as a result of it. I'm not saying that my industry is a bunch of dorks, but um, we are not the cool kids. We know this, right? The cool kids are the people that we cover. In fact, a great deal of the resentment that comes from the dynamic between the two groups has a lot to do with the fact that a lot of the people who cover sports can't live with the fact that the cool kids are the ones that we cover, that the people that we cover by and large are the ones who are better at their jobs than we are at doing our jobs. It's the truth. What you wound up with in that dynamic, I believe, is the seeds of what became a time of much greater distrust between the media and athletes and a building time of declining access that the media had with athletes, a decline in those relationships, and it spreads farther and farther and farther apart until you get into an era that's now this era of social media, and what you then get from there is this relationship used to be symbiotic, that people in the media needed the access to the teams and to the athletes, obviously to do their jobs, and the people on the teams and the athletes or whatever needed the access, needed the relationships with the media to get out whatever information they wanted for branding, increase your fame, visibility, all of this stuff. It used to go back and forth. Well, one, you kind of started and got a level of media that didn't require access. And I say that with no judgment because I have made a lot of money in that world, right? Like, I don't need to talk. You can talk to me if you want to, but I'm going to talk about you regardless. But that dynamic and people who don't, like, treat that with enough care, they then create a situation that leads to a lot of distrust that athletes have toward the media. Much of it is earned. On the other hand, I also think that a lot of what goes on with the media folks is, I mean, the athletes themselves is not understanding that there's still a value from a neutral arbiter, Right. So you can get out here and say whatever it is that you want, but what you want to say may not even be all the things that you need to say and you may not even realize it, right? It ain't always going to look good for you, but you're probably better off opening yourself up to another level of scrutiny or somebody else, right? But that relationship gets broken. And so once that relationship gets broken and you have this split, we get to where we are now where the athlete really doesn't need traditional media if the idea is to get your viewpoint across. Or certainly not if the idea is that you want to build your brand. You can go do that all by yourself. It's funny, I was flying in um, here, my buddy Dave Jacoby, uh, Jacoby of Jalen Jacoby was on the flight with me, and I hadn't really thought about it until I talked to him, but I looked around, and this is me talking, not him, but like you look at the template for all of these podcasts, and they all Jalen and Jacoby. You get an athlete, Find a white guy if you can. If not, you know, like he certainly has a friend on the payroll that can sit down and ask questions and be like a, you know, I don't know what you call these guys, right? But you understand what I'm talking about, right? That was the beginning of it. And Jalen Rose came on with all the stories and everything else. And that's a very famous person who had been through all these different things and seen all these things, a legitimate 
like cultural icon in sports. And that became what all these podcasts basically are, right? And what's interesting about that when I think about it and why I bring it up and how all of us need to think about what we're doing is, hey, man, do not underestimate the value of a professional. It is not that athletes can't make good content. It's that most of them up until this point are not professionals, right? So I worked at ESPN for a very long time. And what happens when you do that is you see athletes who start off doing this new and then become professionals. Like dudes like RC, right? Like Ryan Clark, Marcus Spears, them dudes are professionals. Like they got in there, they got on that grind. Shannon Sharp is a fantastic example of it. Like a dude who was down at Fox, and my understanding was he was getting off the set wanting to watch film on what he was doing so he could get better. You understand what I mean? Like this is not at all to make the argument that an athlete can't be good at making this kind of content. However... It's a lot of people making content and it ain't all good, right? But this happens because the dudes are over there like, we don't need you. And on top of it, and I remember this, this is something Cam said uh, after that game manager controversy that he had, where he got on and he was like, look, I don't know why he went to this place, but he was talking about how football didn't use, he used football, football didn't use him. And he made an argument that he decided to get into this media game and maybe some people have some resentment of the fact that he can do this as well as the people in the media can do this. And that is where I say skirt. <laughs> he, he can be, he's really like talent wise. He's got it. And he's really sincere and obviously got that charisma, you know, like I'm watching him deal with the media early in his career. It's like, really cool to see where he has come now, right? Because that's the thing, when you see a guy and you first become aware of him when he's 21 and now you see him in his mid-30s, right? Like, I don't know the dude, but you've watched him grow up in some ways. And so it's interesting to see the space that he inhabits. But this is not an easy job. Like, Sean, I can imagine how many people you've worked with, athletes, non-athletes, and you see them realize, yo, this is really hard. Yeah, I think people forget that it's like a job that people, like, you've worked years in radio, you've written, you know how to, you know, make thoughts sound really good and people really think that you could just turn on a mic and be yourself and that's enough but the thing is a lot of people who think that are also the people that write the checks on this right and so everything is so saturated right now that i don't know how anything breaks through i've made this point like this is we're doing this podcast here this is i've been doing this now for six years like we're going into the seventh year of it I don't know how anything breaks through, but the model seems to be for a lot of people and what they're just trying to do is like, we're going to find a ball player, we're going to find a homeboy, and we're going to get out here and we're going to talk. And I'm asking the question, because I can only hear but so much of it, A, how much of it is good, and B, who cares? Because what it seems to happen, and a lot of people are getting this, is like, yo, you can get somebody to write you a check, right? You can get you a startup company, get somebody to write the checks for the startup, the startup then writes checks for people, they put this stuff out, you get it on YouTube, but there's only 24 hours in a day. There's only so much of this stuff that any of us are doing that people are going to be able to listen to. And I don't say this myself from a position of feeling threatened by it because I think the lane that I'm in is a different one than these. Like the athlete lane is going to be people competing against each other in that lane. What they are doing, though, is they messing up the game for guest booking. Like, I will say that. Chris Paul uh, going on with D. Wade talking about how he almost got traded to Miami. Hey, man, we over here, dog. You know, we, 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 you could have told anybody in the world, why are you over there telling somebody who already know? The motherfucker, they ain't known that for 10 years. Y'all been sitting on it, man. You could, you could come holler at me. You come holler at anybody else, man. I don't know you that good, but your brother got my phone number. Like, we could have talked about this right here. They, they killing that game. They're like, yo, I'm going to go sit down with my homeboy and we kind of, like, chat, basically, which has a value. Right. And often lands in some very, very interesting places. But I still believe that there's an audience that wants. There's information that an audience wants that a professional is the one to draw it out. Right. Like I used to do a uh, highly questionable with Dan Levitard and he it's often to my frustration, but very effectively could get that stuff out of people because he is a professional. And, you know, you figure out how to take these things into different places and. We got to make sure as an industry, because look, I'm just all the way across the board. It's not about anything like really personal with me, but like Black Thought got that line, we lose a grip on what garbage means, right? Like we got to maintain the standards of what content is and all of this stuff within this industry, because it's going to be real easy for it to get out of hand because there's a zillion things that are out there. And I work for a company that does a lot of content with athletes, right? So I'm not judging them or anybody else when I say this. 
I'm just saying we got to make sure no matter what that we keep this stuff good because a lot of cats want to be good. Like you work with people with us that want to be good at this. Yeah, they they handle it like they do their basketball career or whatever. Like they want to get notes. They want to improve. They want to put in the time that they do their sport. Yeah, but I, but I worry about podcasts as a medium, just generally speaking, because it is something that literally anybody can do. I'm not saying that like it's good. I'm not saying that like it's bad. But you can pull up. They got an app on whatever computer you got that's already built into that. You can get a microphone, plug it in. Anybody can do it. And look, and I know this because I know a bunch of y'all are doing it. A bunch of y'all got podcasts that not one soul in this world is listening to. And that's okay. I'm not saying that as a judgment. You want to do it. You feel it, right? You do a podcast. Ten people like it. And those 10 people really give you feedback, then do your do your podcast for 10 people till it turns into 12, till it turns into 15, till it turns into 20. Right. But literally anybody can do it. And you're not really like there's ain't so much feedback. You're not going to people ain't going to really throw tomatoes at you if it's bad. Right. Everybody goes. Everybody goes. Oh, your friend's going to say it's good. Why not? (laughs) Right? Oh yeah, man. I, I listened to it yesterday, man. That shit was jamming. Right? Like they're gonna they're gonna tell you no matter what that it's good. And so I worry about anything that anybody feels like anybody can do because they're gonna treat it like anybody can do it, and anybody can. But that don't mean that everybody should. Right? And so if you're gonna get in it, I just hope across the board that people treat it with that level of care. Because the one thing I feel like the athletes get frustrated with, with us as media, and it's often fair, is our inability to appreciate what they put into this and how important it is to them and what it takes to get it done. And that these people who could never do it are the ones who get to critique them and go about it. And then they came and just as a whole group, just like, yeah, now we're going to do that shit to you. Right. I mean, that's exactly what it is. And look, I think the criticisms of what we do are absolutely fair. But thinking that you can do it, I, I wish, like when I used to do radio, I wish I could just show up to people's jobs, just put a microphone on the table and be like, go. Because it'd be like this, the first time any of us did radio, we all got the same story. Anybody that's ever taught a class in college got this same story. I walked in the room with an outline. 15 minutes later, I was out of stuff. <laughs> I had gone through every Roman numeral. I don't know how I went through it that fast, right? I said every word that I was going to say. Now you try to throw that off to questions, right? That's happening in radio. You start saying the phone number over and over again. Like, don't you want to call and talk to your new friend, Bo Jones? <laughs> don't you want to have a chat? In a time where nobody cares about whether or not anything is good, and it's just the idea of I can get it out here, I can get a budget for it, I can get a check, whatever it is. Because, like, the cast is coming up now, and somebody's like, yo, you can do a podcast? I mean, you can. Who's got time to listen to it? Like you ask yourself, it's one thing when a podcast comes out and it's like a serial sort of thing. And like, yo, we got a little 10 episode thing for you to jump on. When's the last time you jumped on something new that was like regular and recurring? Because the thing you used to do was still there. Why would it go anywhere? Right. What what time are you getting in your life to work something else new in? And so it just looked like everybody can do it. Like it's going to slow down. It's going to stop. It's not going to go the way that it had because it's just impossible for it. At some point, the money's going to run out. But as long as the game is just, if I can get somebody to write a check right fast, I can go out here and do something. And it just goes line after line after line after line, man. We're going to keep get, getting flooded with so much content that we have no ability to parse through it and find out what's good. And all these cats that's trying to get in it, they all going to get treated like they're the same because it's just like, oh, got another po- got another athlete with a podcast. I hope a lot of them can break through by being good. I just fear that nobody's going to tell them to be good. Prize picks is the most fun you can have by winning up to 25 times your money. And with the football season over, you can still win money with basketball and hockey. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. You can pick combo projections across multiple sports from the Specials League. A league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. Prize Picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. So make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash Bomani and use code Bomani for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Bomani. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. 